<laughs> Keep going, Tyler. Come on up. Here we go. Welcome, everyone. How's everyone's night going so far? I don't have a fancy background that my buddy Mark over here has. <laughs> That's very. We'll get you one. Yeah, we're working on it. This is this is going to be a an improvement throughout every episode. We plan on doing this every Monday night. They're around 8 30 9 o'clock at night so if you guys haven't already hit that like button share this out and uh we got some good topics tonight don't we mark yes we do we're going to be talking about cold weather gear extreme camping gear and that kind of category so if you guys do have questions please put them up in uh bold caps so that we can see them and i'll highlight them um who do we got in here drake's Daggum knives, how's it going? B Fowler, I got a topic. How is the smallest knife Fowler has ever used? $180. That's a good question, right off the bat. And uh, thanks for answering that, B Fowler. I'm going to pop that up so everyone can see that. Uh, so, when it comes to gear, uh, you're going to have, just like anyone else, you're going to have you know really good quality. You're going to have decent quality and you're gonna have cheap quality. Uh, for that knife, I don't know the specs on it. Uh, Mark, your computer probably can handle up handle it better than I can. Uh, that micro mini knife that Fowler uses, uh, I believe it's the steel that's what makes it cost the most, whether it's like a uh, D2 or a, a CR-153 or something like that. What is it called? Uh, B. Fowler, do you have I, – I cannot remember the name off the top of my head. It's a micro, like, mini knife, neck, neck knife. Oh, man, okay. Right off the bat, we're getting to do our homework here. <laughs> um. Well, I'm sure he got it. He didn't get it from the normal person, so I'm sure that's why it was $180. So let's go to B. Fowler's channel and see if he's got a video on it. Hey, okay. Got this video. They like. How's it going, Stone? Uh, why he's looking that up, uh, Texas Jungle, Kill Deer, Bradley, uh, Sam, T.C. Bushcraft, Holler Hound. Um Damage 85, Phil outside, everyone in here that I'm missing, Travis Smith, thank you for coming in. Uh, Be followers, you only got how many videos you got out there? Uh, he uh, He's talking about uh, Zachary Fowler. Oh, uh, from yeah. Fowler's Makery Mischief. Um, I remember the link too that someone had dropped. So it was eight CR, yeah. Um, oh man, this is this is bad off the start. Uh, I know exactly what the knife looks like. It it looks like a small uh, LT right knife, pretty much. Let me see if I can pull this up. Does I imagine it has to do with the steel, the steel that is made from that knife for that blade. Well, let's see what he has in his playlist here. I say it was on Fowler's last video on uh, Zachary Fowler's Maker of Mischief channel. He was using it to carve out that uh, chess piece. Okay, I see it. Yep. I don't know what kind of knife it is. Does he, does he say? In brain tumor. Uh, he said it in the live stream in the chat. Put away so, our fears. Yeah, no, I got you're, it. Fine. you're fine, brother. Uh, you I'll tell you what. I will get back to you on that knife. I, I will. I'm sure it'll come to me. The name of it. But uh, I imagine it is the uh, the steel that 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 knife is made out of. Uh, you know what? There, like, uh, for example, like I brought up the LT right knives. Uh, those things are going for around three hundred and eighty dollars, and it's pretty much one of the most simplest looking knives out on the market. Uh, but because of the heritage and the name behind that knife, it can sell for that amount. 
the price is probably powder steel, maybe felt max or possibly BG10. Very well could be. Rain Dance Bushcraft. Jess, how's it going, brother? Greg901, what's your favorite cheap gear? <laughs> this will be good one. I think my cheapest gear that I love the most would have to be my Mora. Very good choice. Because you can do anything that you want with this thing and it don't break the bank and because it's got the swiss steel in there i mean the only thing they really got to do is keep it polished because it will rust because it's got the stainless swiss steel on it but uh, our carbon steel on it but it it is it's one of the, i watch people cut up carpet with this thing and i take oh, it out in the woods you. and i can carve with it i can do whatever i want which I will end up. I think that I think that would be the I'll just bring cheapest. my whole bag over here because I'm sure I'll have a lot of questions on gear related topics. Whoops. So you talk about rusting up. This is one of my first more knives I've had. Again. Yeah, it's a lot of people. I said they're they're uh, like one of the best go to things around. Oh yeah, I haven't I haven't sharpened this thing in probably it's religiously when I do my wood carvings, and uh, I'm pretty sure I aired off still with it. So uh, I paid ten bucks for mine, and I actually bought two of them for ten dollars. So <clears throat> I got a really good deal on that. But I think if I went with my favorite cheap. Uh, piece of gear. Um, it would have to be my Oak Ridge Bushcraft slash camping knife. Uh, this thing is a monster. It's got a nice coating here on the top. Uh, it's, I don't want to say 5 16 thick. Uh, really nice for patoning or uh, just in general for any kind of hard abuse when you're at your campsite or anything like that uh all around good knife and this knife goes for 15 bucks you can find them on amazon it is a er55 stainless steel it comes with the sheath right uh, inside this pocket you have a ferro rod a ferro rod striker and uh a sharpening stone a filled sharpening stone for out in the field if you need to sharpen it up Uh, can't go wrong with an Amora. Yeah, that's true. Uh, stainless like 1055 or something like that, Mark, for the uh, the steel quality on the Amoras. But if I were to go with uh, all-time cheap gear, this knife would definitely be uh, up there with a few other honorable mentions. I guess everyone has a... a their definition of cheap so and I uh, I lost my mouse when I brought my bag because uh, I have my huge winter uh, Alps outdoors two bag the thing's a, a monster for when it comes to carrying everything I need to carry all right Talk okay about so Jason says Fowler's small knife uh, is a Firefly mini survival knife. Hello, DM the mod, and hello, Fred Not. Hey, Fred. Ciao, Fred. Good to see you. Bill Phillips outside. Let me get caught back up here in the chat. Make sure I don't miss any questions here. Tell her, yeah, the the Gerber is. Uh, I can I can show you some Gerber knives that didn't make it through bushcrafting. Uh oh. Uh, well, he's while well, he's catching up on the chat. One of the things that that I really am um, trade sent me out a knife to try out, and I did I did beat it up quite a bit. But this is their uh, their bushcraft knife. Very heavy, very fat tine. I do like it as far as. Uh, for um, 
but tonning and stuff like that, that's a really good, but it's kind of fat for like, if I want to actually uh, carve or do anything like that. And by far, I think one of my go-to knives that I've always had on my side is going to be a K bar. That is going yeah. to be my, my dozer is my favorite knife of all time. And I, I do like that one. And I've been playing around. The only thing I don't like with BK now, he came out with the powder coating, but this is actually a really nice little, um, bushcraft knife also. Yeah. Holler hound. Uh, I know what you're talking about too. The, there are, uh, those fake knockoff more knives at Walmart. They're actually located in the fishing aisle. And I'll tell you what, those knives are just as, just as good as the uh, actual more knives. I actually have a few of those myself. I was actually going to think but about I, it. And the I, cheapest thing that I could find that we all use a whole lot of, and right now um, a certain the, big lot store has. Uh, I got two in my closet. I got two of my vehicles. Like I got one. You there? Yep, I'm here. Difficulties here. Drop down your on your um. You're using which computer? You're using your other one. Yeah, my old one. I oh, had okay. a few tabs open. I'm gonna close those down. Yeah, one of the things that I found recently is uh, Walmart has uh, 550 Paracord on. They are on sale. I should say on sale, but they got a bunch of them for under three. I think it was like three eighty nine. That is a good topic too, Mark, because <laughs> in the camping aisle, you'll find uh, the same amount, 50 feet of paracord, 550 paracord. First. But if you go back into the hardware store, uh, you have HyperTuff. Uh, and this is same 550 paracord, 50 feet for 297 so for any of you guys that do get paracord at Walmart, instead of going straight to the camping aisle like most of us would naturally go to, if we just take a, a walk over to the hardware section where the locks and light bulbs are usually are, you'll find this there for a lot cheaper. And that saved me ended up making uh, this right here, my, my paracord survival belt. So I got about 250 feet of paracord on here, the way it's wrapped. Uh, I, I tried many other wraps. I'm not really good at wrapping, but I find this design to be simple, easy, and not only that, but you know, people that have these emergency survival bracelets or belts, uh, in case of emergency and you need a paracord and you need it in a hurry, uh, with this design, this this can come right off real easy and still have a belt left over. So trying to be a little bit different when I created that. There's so many things with with you, you can do with paracord. Not only you know it's 550 is the strands alone. You can use that for fishing. You can use it for tying your boots. You can um, for hanging your food up in the trees. If you don't have enough line, you can actually take the strands out and um, make your line longer. Uh, if you have a short piece of paracord, you can pull that out and use more of it. That's there's so many so many different things. It's like duct tape. Right. Uh, every new pair of boots that I get, since I, I do construction, I have to wear silt toe boots all the time. And I go through boots like crazy, especially doing concrete work. Every pair of uh, boots that I get, I always change the laces out with paracord. That's a, uh, you know, it's always good to have. Tasha says, Shrades do make some good stuff, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I, I There's been a few that I bought at Walmart for, I think, under the $20 mark. That uh, those knives hold up just as well as some of my SE knives, or I have an Azula knife that is around the same size as the Shrade that I bought, and they both, you know, side by side. And that Shrade I got, I actually do put it through a test. I uh, saw so there's one of my, the videos that I have in my way, way back when in my channel, and we put it side by side against the K bar, and it does pretty well. Um, let's see here. We got strong arm is a B. So is the prodigy an LMF2? So yes, I actually have the LMF2. Well, I did. I ended up training it in uh, mine. I have it right in the field on the sheath. 
that was a it was an awesome knife. I just didn't like the texture of the the uh, the grip on it. So where the other thing that we wanted to talk about is once the knives are through here and paracord is cold weather gear. And the reason why I want to bring up this topic is because I got well, was about three years ago, a company out of California sent me all of their hiking and camping gear. And this was a three season stuff that I've actually, I've got a video going through a tornado with it. So it was, it's pretty, it's a pretty stout little tent and the tarp is really good also. Well, this, Last weekend, we took it to the fourth season in extreme weather, 14 below in the snow blowing, and we put it through the test, and we only used their gear. And there, that video will be coming out here shortly, and then we're going to actually, me and uh, Tyler are going to talk about that because it doesn't come out as well as we thought it was going to. Yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> which will be a, a video on uh, here soon, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, good mid cost bushcraft knife on Amazon made by Perkins sixty or forty to sixty dollar range. I'll have to look into that. Like I said, the uh, the knife that I have, the one I was showing, the Elk Ridge bushcraft knife, I think it's going for around fifteen to twenty bucks, and it's super sharp. I mean, you guys seen in one of my videos, my Thanksgiving dinner video. I actually had to use that knife to open up a can of uh, kettle corn. And uh, even after that, I was still, I, I made a, uh, a bushcraft spoon out there in the bush with no issues at all. 50 to $60 range. Um, is a bushcraft knife. Um, so this one right here that I showed you, the Becker 2, that's a $62 knife on Amazon right now, this exact same one here. Oop. Where's my... So this is a $62 knife that you can buy, and it's the Becker 2. It is a really nice knife. The only downfall that I didn't like about it is that they powder-coated the blade for protection and it seems to hold up when you are batoning and stuff like that but otherwise it's a really good knife it does have a striker set on the bottom for your littler like my ferro rod is a lot bigger <laughs> most, but it does have i mean you can go on the back side and sometimes get it to work but that's what the bad thing with this coating is is you gotta wear the coating off and then you can get it to strike. It doesn't want to. So that's the problem with that knife. Yeah, that's that's the issue I kind of run into with my uh, SE, SE series knives, whether it be my SE three, four, or five. They have that coating. Yep. Which is good, for, you know, for protecting the blade. But uh, as a bushcrafter who mainly uses, you know, stuff like these, these ferro rods. It, it makes it a bit challenging. You can sit here all day long. What are the dimensions of that uh, ferro rod you have here, if anyone's interested? This one is a half inch by 10 inches long, and then I made the, the stick out of cedar, just so you got something to hold to. But what I wanted to show, guys, you can sit here all day with this coating. doesn't do anything. Ooh, that one works pretty good. So, and... <laughs> That's a difference. Be, I, this one has a different type of coating. It's not like the powder coating would be. And like I said, I've batoned with stuff for this. I've actually stuck it in the side of the tree to use this like a grab up and climbed up with trees on it. So this is a very stout, nice knife. And this is a dozer. So if you're looking, but it's over your $62 range. But a good knife is something you always want. You got all kinds of uh, ferro rods to play with. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting into collecting them. Like I said, the uh, the S, what is this? The uh, the UST Fire Striker that I got. 
Uh, I want to say, I can't remember the dimensions on that. They're fairly thick. Uh, this thing will last me forever. The only thing I don't like, which I'm going to try to get this to come up on full screen here, is so it's all waterproof. Uh, the striker was actually right here on the inside on that plastic clip, but um, that plastic wore, wore out, out, especially in the cold winter. Off. So that's my only dislikes on this. But other than that, I mean, you guys can see I that thing was a lot, lot thicker. They have another probably 500,000 more fires to light with it. So, but the. You know, even if you have um, ferro rods, flint and steel, all that other stuff, my pack has probably three bics in it. Yep. Just in case and that it, situation it, comes where, you know, that's yeah, the other thing is if you uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if you come into a situation that is is you're wet, you're cold, you fall in the creek, uh, anything like that, uh, time is not on your side. So getting a fire going, uh, I would not be playing around with a ferro rod or anything like that. I'd be looking for my bick. I see that. I think that's kind of the thing now too that people see, uh, especially here on YouTube, a lot that people see people doing, you know more primitive ways of getting a fire going, but in a case of emergency where, you know, you're facing hypothermia or the beginnings of hypothermia, you know, who, who does it matter if you pull out a big lighter or a Zippo and get a fire going? Cause that few seconds is what could ultimately save your life. You know? Yep. Uh, as you have seen here, um, like I said, I have a hidden wood, hidden woodsman possible pouch outside. I have, you know, like magnesium. I've got all kinds of different ferro rods, uh, even some ferro rods with the magnesium on them. Uh, this is a really good one that I actually used in my last video. It's a more primitive look to it. But yes, I, I have uh, flint and steel. This is actually made uh, from a good friend of mine, uh, Beastly Ironworks. And, uh, you know, other, other ferro rods, and I got like five big lighters that I carry all times too, along with man-made uh, fire kits, because even though it's nice thinking woods and use all natural materials, it just doesn't work like that all the time. You know, every environment's different. And I think that's what a lot of people need to understand. Like from where I live to where you live, you know, it could be crazy. I mean, if I went out there thinking that I could use the same material and the same stuff that I have out here where you live, I might not survive, you know, a seven day winter challenge, you know? Right. You, you gotta, you gotta be a, a master of your environment. One of the, the things about bushcrafting is, is that it is, it is very fun and it's challenging. And you, if you think you're going to go out there, uh, and we have we have places set up where you can walk into and there's there's a lean to cabin there's two lean twos there's a super shelter the fireplace is set up the wood is split when you walk in there it's like going to a camping trip it's pretty it's pretty laid back pretty nice but if you're wandering around and walking around and trying to hunt and do all that other stuff you don't want to want to be messing around with the flint and steel you want to get your fire going you're cold you're wet whatever the means necessary is and that brings you to another set of gear is your sleep bag. And or your parka or something in that category that will keep you warm. Yeah, that was a good point there, child sir. I don't know if you read that, Mark, but it says don't forget that you can also use the skin of the paracord, break that down and get an additional 25 to 30 extra strands. Yep, that's so what I was talking about before. You, If you, you want to use fishing line and you ran out, it can tear it down, and you got a lot of line there. My cows. Cameras, titanium camp knife for ten dollars holds up nice. Only thing that sucks is the sheath. I can make one out of leather. Very true. Very true. I don't have any of those fancy leather sheath, you know, that have a a uh, a ferro rod holder with them or anything like that. Maybe maybe one day I'll get one. 
B. Fowler says, I use it as full mm -hmm. chord on my chainsaw. It's a that's real. Just sound it and it's so many carry 550. I know <laughs> I'm probably way behind here on the chats. Yeah, Let's Mike, exactly, actually, exactly. Primitive is is for primary source. Butane is for backup source. Pretty yeah. close. Do you carry a wool blanket for cold weather? I actually, yes, I do. I have a military-grade wool blanket. Um, the best thing that I've gotten for cold gear would be I have I have the full the full military sleep system, but you can buy a bivy bivy bag and what's cool about a bivy bag how they train us in the military is this is this is waterproof you can use this like a poncho or cover up you can climb right in there uh, you can use it as a shelter and there's enough space in the bivy bag to put your boots roll up your pants your jacket whatever it means and then you can use that as a pillow and when it seals up you're good but these you are want, you want to pull that in camera for you a little bit. There, there we go. go. So bivvies are really nice. And like I said, it's set, it's set up. It has a zipper and stuff in here. It's set up for the three season sleep system. got all military grade zippers in here so they're they're good for ever but when you open it up any kind of sleeping bag that you got is going to fit in there no problem to me that's one of the the main things when i go out on a cold weather camp is my military sleeping bag but you got to guys also got to remember is your weight ratio you get one of them you're good for cold weather but they're heavy yeah and that's the thing too like even even i myself i try to you know take as let as minimum gear as possible i don't want a heavy you know a heavy sack with me uh, especially you know depending on where i'm going if i have like a two to five mile hike into the woods i try to keep it uh pretty light you know bare essentials but at the same time you know the the biggest thing when it comes to being outdoors that i know ruins it uh, the experience for a lot of people is being uncomfortable, being cold, and, you know, trying to show off, saying, oh, you know, so, so many items. I took 10 items out there, and, you know, I did, I, I made it through the night. Yeah, it was horrible, but I made it through it. If you're going to go out there, you know, a lot of people like myself, I go out to the woods to unwind from the busy, hectic, you know, working all day and all the stress at home. You know, I go out to the woods to get away from all that. I don't want to go out there and be stressing that I'm going to be freezing or I'm going to be cold and miserable the whole time I'm out there. Uh, as far as uh, wool blankets, I do I have a, a, a mammoth woolly wool blanket that you guys will be seeing here soon. Uh, I just picked that up not that long ago, so I like it. Except uh, for cold camping, uh, like I got showing Mark earlier. Uh, this blanket system right here, this is an old Wookiee. Uh, they use in the military. Uh, so I used this on my last outing, and it was 15 degrees out, and I had no issues with it. I, I was warm all night, so, and that's a lot lighter. Like I said, this this folds up. It's super light compared to my uh, Titan negative uh, 15 degree sleeping mummy bag. That's like an ultra. Fly pack. I saved four pounds off by just taking that blanket. Let's see here. I'll see up, up here when, when we go camping in our extreme weather, um, the lightest pack that I'll run is 60 pounds. And the heaviest pack, because of my snowshoes, that I can run, and that's if I'm pulling an otter sled, I will, I will put uh, up to 80, but most of that will probably be an otter sled. Uh, damn, Maybe. I didn't. I, I did I did change my Instagram name. It, it went from the Bearded Woodsman and to now it's just the same name as my channel, uh, Tylerwood Bushcraft, on Instagram. So I might have to change that link uh, here on YouTube. 
Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get caught back up here on these comments. I have one for such a short road. It throws some sparks. Let's see. Yep, Nathan has some monster ferro rods. Lobs of sparks. Nathan. Nathan. Which Nathan are we talking about here? Travis Smith. Uh, who's so he says? Can someone post Mike's channel and links so I can sub? Uh, Mike hiking with Mike is that what he's talking about? I have that from Walmart. Got space to stuff cotton. Awesome. I carry a Zippo EFK as well. Love the outdoors. Eagle Sparrow Rod or Steel. Uh, Jess, if you want to come come up here, if you're still in here, uh, let me know and I'll send you a link uh, through Instagram. Major cash round equals lighter or whatever the hell works fast. Almost caught up here, guys. Let's see. Whoops, I skipped so far down. <laughs> I'm not used to this many people on live, so bear with me here, guys. Here we go. So Mike, Hike with Mike says, Primitive is a primary source, routine is a backup source. Okay, I remember you saying that a while ago. <laughs> exactly. True with Hike with Mike. What did Nicholas Green Outdoors say? Just got some of that extreme paracord that has Cavalar wax string and fishing line in it, as well as wire. I think I've seen that, Nick. Um, I don't remember where I saw that from. I was... I was searching the, the backwoods of survival stuff online and I ran into that and I was going to order some today and I just <coughs> do not remember uh, what it was called. I have a question. Here we go. What is the best way to, to wash a wool blanket? Oh, you don't want my opinion on it because <laughs> it takes forever. What about you, Mark? You got any good suggestions on that? Mama, you always wash my blankets, and she, uh, you know, I, she does, she takes care of all that stuff. I know you don't want to put them, I would guess, to put them on delicate uh, because you don't want the woven stuff. And I know she doesn't throw in a dryer because it'll shrink. And then we should right. just hang out. So uh, that's the best thing that I can tell you. Most of the time, with my, especially my camping blanket, unless something is spilled on it or just, just smells rancid. I just let it sit out in the outside air. Uh, yeah, well, my first experience washing it before I, I knew what the heck I was doing, I, I threw mine in the in the dryer, and it was to say I had to uh, repurpose that, that blanket because it was no good by the time I got done with it. Yeah. So, you got you know, you got to learn from your mistakes, you know. It, it takes one time to learn from it. So, uh, do you have cash in your survival kit? Uh, fishing pro I I do have cash I have different styles of cash I have gold I have silver uh, I have mercury and uh, US currency as well I have a few uh, other currencies from like Canada my, uh, not a lot but you know enough to where if I needed to you know get away with, or do something with it, I have that option. That makes sense. You would use a fire to stay warm during the winter, same time of the year. I use a fire for bugs. Yeah, you're behind on comments. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to speed the this The question up. is, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people out there that like to push a limit and have no fire coal camp. That's when things can, can turn bad. Um, if you're in an environment where you can't start a fire or you have to coal camp, that's when the gear comes in. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely do that, Travis. I'll have to uh, message you after this. Um, supposed to dry clean them. That makes sense. They, they Obviously, those people know a lot more than us. Dmod says, "Yeah, you wash all wool in cold water and line dry. Do not use a dryer; it will turn out half the size." <laughs> Tyler knows. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick says, have you seen the canvas cutter bag? It's canvas. I have not. Uh, I did. I didn't see your video today where you were showing off what you're taking out for your uh, hammock camping, and uh, I really like that bag you was using too, the, the Timberland bag. I was gonna look into those. Can I have some survival gear? Well, yeah, absolutely. You gotta go out and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Tyler and Mark. Hey, Dennis. Um, I'm oh, buddy, here we, here we buying. I'll catch yeah. you. You start reading the top. Um, Chelsea says the cord you were talking about has a Kevlar thread, copper wire, and fishing line. It's from Titan Survival. I also think Atwood rope makes it too. I'm going to wash it before I use it the first time. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, Chelsea, I need to get him on a live stream. Uh, he's in a lot of the other uh, channels like uh, Zachary Fowler's channel, Greg's channel. Drop forward survival channel, and you know he he knows his stuff. So maybe one of these days, Charles, I need to get you up here and uh, pick your brain. I'm Walter Light, backpacking background. I use new technology, but I practice primitive in case I ever need it. See, that's the thing, Phil. Too is that I, I it, it does not hurt at all to uh, you know hone in on on primitive. Uh, because all that new stuff, yes, it's nice, you know, flashlights and uh, ferro rods, lighters, but, you know, like, like we were talking about earlier, if you were to walk across a, a lake that you thought was completely frozen and you fall in and you need to get a fire going immediately because it's going to save your life, um, you know. Not only lighter, that. What? Well, what I do too, especially if I'm in, I know I'm in a wet environment, I do have fire starters, you know, on my person because as we're walking through, we see the top of a cattail or we'll see some brush or we'll see some dry grass. You're always packing your pockets full of stuff to make your, your tinder bundle. If you fall in, now your tinder bundle is soaking wet and you got nothing to start with. So it's always nice to have that backup in your pack. So if the other thing too is if you're in a wet environment, have that, uh, that, if you got an otter sled or whatever else, check the ice first by walking across without your pack because you want your all your dry stuff is in there. Um, I use a an Alice pack, so when I'm going anywhere across the creeks or anything like that, I always set my Alice pack on a side. I grab a stick, poke stick, to try to see if I can bust through. And when I know I can get across safe, then I'll pull it back across. Whoops. Every time I get so close to the end, my thing skips. Oh my gosh, I'm so far down. As yeah. This AZ Nick. Infidel, how's it going? I'm gonna scroll through this real quick. Tell the bushcraft, sure, set me up. Oh wow, Jess, I'm sorry. That was like a long time ago. Um. All right, Mark, continue on while I hop over and send him this link real quick. All right. So then we got uh, Nicholas. Yeah, it's nice to have a. I got a cheap. I got it cheap in a lot of, of sales at the Timberland. I went out to the hot tent today and ran the wood stove for the first time, and it was at 90 in there when I was burning off the oil. Wow. One of the things, too, yeah, if you got them stoves, you want to take them outside and burn them off before you put them in your tent because they're going to get a nasty smell. Right. Yeah, that's, that's my issue, too, is always coming home smelling like campfire. I don't mind it, but. President's bushcraft, outdoors, uh, colas. I, I love the Hudson Bay blanket I have on the gift card video I released on Friday. Gift guide. They're, they're dollars, though. Oh, Spicy's live, too, right now. Okay. Um. That's the thing, too, is, you know, we, we try to figure out a good time to fit this in. So, um, and being the first time, we'll be talking, at, you know, once or twice a week, depending on how the schedule works out. Right. Um, that's the thing, too. Like I said, I, I, I try to plan this where, uh, like I said, I, I moderate for a few other bigger channels like uh, Nicholas Green Outdoors. Uh, LABs, 
Craig Oven, Craig Evans, uh, Zachary Fowler, uh, Chris Thorne. So, uh, you know, I try to make sure, like, depending on when they're doing it, especially for like uh, people like Fowler and, and Craig Evans, because I'm literally their only mod uh, for their channel, and you know, they'll get five, ten thousand people in their live, and uh, I feel really bad if I wasn't there, and you know, he had to uh, try to do that all himself. So, I've gotten pretty good at it. Which, uh, you know what, Jess, t -t 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 I need, I can't send a message off my f computer to you on Instagram, so I need to figure out how to do that on my phone. I took the placenta. What, what do you think, Mark? How can I do that? What are you looking for? To send the, the invite link uh, from StreamYard. Um. I can't send it to him on Instagram because I can't message you on Instagram on the computer. Can put it in the chat, and as soon as he grabs it, let him tell you, and then take it down. Yeah, I'll do that. Or he can. Uh, I'm going to talk Tyler in here to making another uh, community bushcraft channel on Facebook, so we can post links in there. Right. Yep. So I posted that link. Jess, I want you to hurry up and grab that up. Uh, or if Nick, if you want to join too, if you have time. As soon as you guys come up, as soon as you see them pop into the cellar down there, make sure that you uh, delete that comment. Yeah. We've been having a lot of issues with uh, death threats and, and uh, all kinds of stuff from uh, trolls and all that on here on YouTube. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Oops. How do I delete? Oops. The three dots on the side deletes it. It doesn't. It says put user in timeout or block user. What? Yeah. No way. No. Uh, How are we going, Jess? Doing better by the glass. How's it going? I'm sorry I missed uh, the first little bit of your, of your uh, podcast episode. But uh, I've been finding it really interesting. Um, I wanted to um, to mention because way back you guys were talking about your favorite low cost gear, and mine is actually my wool blanket, my cheap ass Canadian Forces wool blanket. I love that thing. It's funny because when I was in in cadets, I hated them. We all hated those blankets, but now that <clears throat> now that I spend time like in the frigid. <laughs> <laughs> with nothing but a campfire i love that blanket and the nice thing about um surplus gear as you guys well know is cheapest chips right yeah yeah i think it was like 40 dollars canadian great purchase and um i i have dry clean just to sort of tie it up i have dry cleaned it before but i will also you know when i'm not feeling flush with money i'll just wash it in cold water but i'll dry it flat because i find that if you hang it um, if it's too heavy, you can sort of start to, uh, to to stretch the the fibers. You guys, your mileage may vary on that, but I, I try to dry it flat or drape it across something. Right on. Uh, we do have a question here too, and uh, it does help, guys, if you do uh, leave a comment in uh, all caps. Yeah. So, since I'm so far behind, <laughs> uh, what's the best way to grow your YouTube channel. Uh, you know what? Being consistent is a good one. And uh, extreme hard work. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Like I said, I, I got pretty lucky off the bat. When I started my channel about 10 months ago, uh, within the first three months of starting, I, I got monetized. I had 1,000 subscribers. I had around 12,000 watch time hours. Uh, everything took off, and then you find channels that are like, you know, want to help promote your, your, your stuff. Uh, stay away from those because those severely hurt your channel. And uh, I learned the hard way uh, supporting a few buddies. And my channel took a a dive and went reverse like two months or not. No, it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I was at 1,980 1, something subscribers uh, just two weeks ago. And here I am over 2,200 right now. So uh, right. things are starting to pick back up, which is. Justin, glad you're here. 
Uh, he says, uh, and Friar, hey, Tyler, I am new to your channel. Is there a specific topic regarding questions from the live stream? Enjoying the live stream. P.S. It looks like Mark is on fire, though. <laughs> Keep it warm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, tonight we're talking all things related to bushcraft, whether it's bushcrafting. Uh, right now we've been on the topic for cold weather camping. Uh, I mean, we go. Uh, I'm going to start doing this every Monday. This is going to be the first episode. It's going to get a lot better. I'll have a better setup here uh, soon. Hopefully, maybe next week. And uh, just anything bushcrafting, survival, uh, prepping homesteading, any of those, uh, you know, even extreme camping. Uh, we want to talk about gear-wise, the do's and don'ts, the the real dangers that, you know, you're in when it comes to, like, cold weather camping or stuff like that. Knowing knowing your gear, knowing what you're using, the purposes of it, you know, they always, they always say, like, in the military is you have your primary, your secondary, your tertiary. The same thing goes for bushcrafting. You always want to have a set of three. So fire, even with fire starting, <coughs> your cold gear, your dry gear, whatever you're going to be necessary that you can safely carry and you're not overdoing it. And we're going to get into the, some of the things, too, of uh, epic fails. Um, I've got some good footage of epic fails that can really help out others if they try to do it. Hiking deep, yeah, I was on fire for a while. I'm trying to stay warm. Do you guys find that um, you have to pay more attention to your calories when you're camping in the cold rather my, than in the summer? Well, mine out here, yeah, I, I go up almost a 4,000 cal intake when I'm out in the cold, being, especially if I don't have a, a site set up or I've got no firewood split, depending on if I'm, I'm I, oh, today I'm going to take an ax or – I'm just going to take my knife out or if I got my silky saw with me, depending yeah. on that, you're going to burn through a lot more calories. Um, <clears throat> if, if I'm in a dire situation, I'm finding little stuff. I'm using two trees. I'm trying to snap stuff off trees. Yeah. Uh, anything like that. Lower brush is another good one. But knowing your environment because that's a huge thing and that will save your life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah but that, that's, that's in more of a survival situation i'm just saying like if you're hitting the woods for for you know the joy of it right you're, you're doing a, a little bushcraft weekend or something yeah like i decide if i'm gonna like i want to take my hatchet with me i have a mm -hmm. i have a bushcraft backwoods axe and she's only uh, i think 23 inches long and i'll have my knife or i'll take the silky saw out, uh, because i got wood set up i just need <coughs> to some, some timber or something like that or i'll take the k-bar out because i know i can chop down a little tree with that do some brushing so it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to burn a lot more calories swinging an axe than you are if you're going to be just breaking breaking branches <laughs> or something like that. So your calendar, yeah. day, depending on your weather, like up here, when we're, when we're hitting below zero, mm -hmm. you're burning calories while you're sleeping. Well, I was what I was sort of <coughs> trying to get at is that I also find that um, I use up – energy faster as my my body tries to maintain its warmth especially out at the extremities yep so i like if i'm out in the winter i'm just i'm just eating like a backhoe you know just boom just to sort of keep the uh, the energy up and i find that i don't have the same appetite <coughs> excuse me guys um i don't have the same appetite when it's warmer weather is a lot of things that i take out especially if i know she's going to get cold uh one thing is I'll take a, a steak out with me. Mm -hmm. I have my red meat. I'll take my tuna out with me so I have some kind of a uh, high cal that way. Um, we do, I make a lot of pine tea out there. It's kind of one of my favorite things to do in the wintertime. Yeah, a good citrus intake. You got some good good vitamins and minerals in there to keep mm -hmm. you going. And then that warmth actually warms you up on the inside. Yeah. Um, we started a long time ago making our own uh, dehydrated foods. I don't buy like Wise Foods or uh, Mountain House or anything like that. I make my own dehydrated, put it together. So I have that set up where if I want to have like a beef stew, everything is all ready to go. I just got to cook up the meat, throw the noodles in, and I'm ready to have a nice stew. I um, I've, I have a dehydrator, and I've started using it. 
mostly just trying to make jerky and stuff. Um, but I really need a lot more practice with it <clears throat> before I can really depend on it for stuff like that. You know, yeah. one of the coolest things that you can do. That's my issue too, is when it comes to like mountain houses and stuff, I'm a sucker for them. Like I, I truly do like them. It's just, you know, spending eight, 10 bucks per uh, meal, you know, it gets a little expensive. So hopefully I've been good this year. Maybe Santa Claus will bring me a dehydrator and I can start. If you guys are looking for a really good dehydrator that you can do a lot of stuff in a quick hurry and get some stuff done and it's you know it's done, check out the Excalibur. It is a commercial size dehydrator. It's got nine trays in it. It's it blows from the back forward, so it's not blowing from the top down. Um, People keep saying that to me, man. They everyone like everyone that makes it sound like the entire world's talking about dehydrators, but I keep hearing that brand name pop up. Yeah, it's I've, I've had mine for years, and it, it's just a, it's a trooper. I never had to replace it. Um, I can I know I can get five pounds of jerky in there if I want to. Hmm. Five uh, pounds. Yep. So I you like can. That. There's a lot of stuff that you can. There's another good trick too, guys. Is when you make your jerky, it's it's you can stick it in your pocket and you can have it. You don't have to keep it frozen or anything like that. So it's another really quick energy source to boost you up. Um, yeah. But one of these times, I think when Tyler, when we do this, I'll actually bring out some of them uh, dehydrated foods that I made. And, you know, we can walk through it because I started out taking like the freezing, uh, frozen vegetables at the store. You just make sure that they're fresh frozen. Mm -hmm. Throw them on your dehydrator. You got vegetables, very light. Um, you can do potatoes. You just blanch your potatoes. You can actually throw them on a dehydrator and make your potato flakes. Uh, mm -hmm. I've taken and I've got some. Um, Per, uh, some paper that goes on the top of there. You can take your excess chili that you made two weeks ago, and you're gonna go stick it in the freezer, pull it out. You can pour that on there. You can dehydrate mm -hmm. that. You have your own chili base ready to go. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, one of the other things too, like Dennis brought up, uh, he, he was asking why I don't bring a bunch of these. Uh, I've been actually taking this one. I haven't actually had this one yet. This is a biscuit country. Mm -hmm. And you got the, the Canadian version, huh? Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, have around, I want to say close to 5,000 MREs in my closet, at least. <laughs> so I, I <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know it, I'm right now where I'm taking a break from eating them because, you know, I have so many um, – so yeah, go ahead. Sorry. That's because that's because he's got somebody that can go grab them for him. I probably otherwise he wouldn't have so many. Dude, I have a brother and a sister who are both service members, and I don't get any of that. <laughs> Maybe it's because uh, you know we're Canadians, so the Canadian forces are a little stingier or something. But I don't know. I don't know. But, they, but you know, because the thing is, it's such a good. Um, solution not for backpacking, right? This, this thing weighs a ton, right? Right. Ton, right? But um, if you're sort of look, I'm not I'm not much of a prepper, but if I was, you know, these are a real cheap and cheerful solution for like your 72 hour family kit kind of thing. Oh yeah, I, I'm I I've been uh, hooking Stephen this year uh, hiking deep with these MREs and uh, he's building a nice collection with them as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, one of these right here, like this MRE, this weighs, oh, what is the, the weight on this? I don't know off the top of my head, but and realistically, we have one meal last me two days yeah. and be just fine with it, so. Yeah, see, we got well, one of the things that we do at the homesteading. Obviously, I'm, I'm doing two hats, but this is dehydrated smoked um, red pepper. So this would be your like your paprika. One of the good things about that is, is that you can make your own seasonings and you can take them out with you. And when you take food that is seasoned with your own stuff, especially when you're hungry and you're cold out, it's for some reason it just tastes so much better. And I can even eat that chili mac that you you get from uh, Mountain House with this stuff. 
Hiking Deep says, Tell you what is my MRE pimp? Yeah, that, that, that about sums it up. Uh, yeah, we got one. Go ahead. But you got to, you got you know, the biggest thing in cold weather environments is that you have to know your cal intake. Yeah. So if you're a normal man, it's about 20, it's about 21 to 2300 cal on a normal day. You want to double that when you're going out in the woods, and especially in a cold environment, because if you're just sitting there, your body's burning cows to keep warm. Yeah. So you have to you have to put that in, in into consideration. You want to eat some stuff that's going to pack the protein in there, get your cal intake up, get the good fatty acids. That's why I always take I'll take two bags of tuna out there because they they weigh absolutely nothing. Wait, two bags of tuna? Yeah, just two little bags that you can buy at the store. You know, they're they're just I don't know, Tyler. You got one laying around? Uh, what? Here, I'll go get one. Hang on. Uh, Travis, he said if a ch if it's a chicken meal that has candy in it, let me tell you something about these ones. These ones, and I'll actually uh, I'll pop this up on full screen and I'll open this all for you guys. Uh, this is the one I never ate before. This is a brisket one, but every single MRE has uh, candy in it, whether it be Skittles, M and M's, um, all kinds of good stuff. So I'll open it up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So you that first off your heater pad. Oops. This is how you heat up your your meal. Give you a spoon. Um, they give you some kind of a beverage. Like this is a Irish cream cappuccino. Instant powder. That'd be, that'd be good with some and you have a this is a wheat snack. And then we have some peanut butter, along with a bunch of assorted things like toilet paper, uh, a energy drink, some wet naps, some uh, mint, uh, some wet naps. Uh, okay, so right here, there's the candy of, uh, of the choice. We have some Twizzler nibs. I've actually never seen Twizzlers in an MRE before. And uh, yeah, and then also you have raisins. With Tyler, one. Like how that down. Oops, you can't see, right. see what you're doing. Let me see. Oh, let me go back, back here. There you go. Uh, yeah, your since this one's a brisket, you have your brisket, and then you have a uh, granite potatoes. That sounds good. But that is the candy. Like I said, every MRE comes with some kind of sort of candy. Will it be uh, uh, Skittles, Reese's, um, all kinds. This one actually has twi Twizzlers, which I've actually never had Twizzlers from a Mary pack. I'll tell you something, Tyler. Mine's brisket, too. Oh, really? Well, it's smoked meat, which is a brisket, but it's it's done in a, in a Montreal style. But, whoop, smoked meat is, um, essentially, it's a brisket. It's So that's what I got. Got mashed potatoes. Ah, my camera. Uh, there's a hot chocolate thing. Beverage bag, right? Some jam and some peanut butter. Justin, I have like 5,000 other ones. I'm actually going to eat this one tonight. It won't go to waste. Uh, even though I did open it, even unopened like this, they still have a, a long life, long shelf life on them. Yeah. Because they're exactly. everything individually wrapped. Sliced apples. Boom. Yep, there you, you go. You know what? I'm going to chow down on this. Uh, you know what? Right the hell now. nibbling on these uh, Twizzlers nibbles, too. So Let's make Fun it a uh, candy for evening. For servicemen, MREs to boost me out. Phil, oh. Phil, I did Building. not know that. Yeah, thing too, Tyler. You know Mark? What? Fun fact. M&Ms were created for servicemen, MREs to boost morale. Yes. Another fun fact: Smarties mm -hmm. are better than M and M's. The other thing too, Tyler, if you take if you take your MREs and you break them down and take the food out of their boxes, you'll cut it down to a uh, the weight in half. If you didn't if you didn't yep. know that. Yep. So yep. So when you put if you see the paper boxes of cardboard, a lot of people like to save that for certain fires. 
but it does cut the weight down if you take that and just separate it all out. Like I'll have one with my main meals in and I'll have that in a Ziploc bag and my snacks and everything else, my entrees and another one. Mm. But anyway, this is what I want to show you guys because if you do get this, this stuff and you start looking at Cal and Take and figuring it out, here's these here's these tuna packages I was talking about that I take out with me. Now this one out here, this one is is ninety cal. This one here is only seventy cal's. Now if you look at them like the the mountain houses, or you look at uh, all the other ones, they're 146 cal if you eat everything that's in that package. So you'd have to eat a whole lot of them to eat the 4,500. But if I take some rice out there, I take some steak, I take some tuna, uh, stuff that I can make on the fly, you're going to have a lot better meal and it's going to be more calorie intake than what you're going to be just by packing. What's an MRE 2,300? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Tyler says he's got it. That that's enough for him for two days. So he's only taking that half a day. Right, and that's with uh, very light chore duties when I'm out there. Yep. You know, I I can't be out there chopping wood all day and you know fishing or you know anything like that. So. All right, I'm gonna be, right, be right back, Tyler. I gotta go. Yep. I'm with the Smarties. No, no. Well, Smarties here are different than Smarties. I think what you guys call Smarties is what we call Rockets. Um, <clears throat> we have Smarties here, too. The ones that are what they call them, anyways. Smarties here uh, look like M&M's, and they crunch like M&M's, and they taste, in my opinion, a little bit better than M&M's. It is the same general idea. Man, that chocolate bar, I've got like caramel all over my hands and my keyboard. Because <laughs> it was quite, so I got scrunched at the bottom of the of the IMP. Oh, and of course, chiclets. Hold on, let me see. Whoop, boom. Couple oh, yep. Little hot chocolate. Little bag to do your hot chocolate in. Oh, yeah, and it comes with... This one comes with two packets of peach sports drink. Yeah, uh, all of ours come with a, some kind of sports energy drink as well. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's 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 a very good. Um, I mean, this stuff tastes like crap. Oh yeah. In fact, I think you have the exact same chiclets as I do, right? Yep. Yeah. Along with your toilet paper and. Uh, that. But actually, this one came with uh, this Irish, Irish cream cappuccino instant powder, which actually sounds pretty yeah, good about right I'm now. I'm just a little. Oh, let me see. Thing. Which I think is actually a hot chocolate rather than a coffee. So this, this oh, first oh, one, oh. Tyler, that we're going to try out here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is specifically for you. This is Tuna Creations Jalapeno. Sounds good to me. I like jalapeno. Let me see. I like pepper. Oh, Mark, I'm just taking everyone off here. There oh, yeah, was, no. kicking everyone yeah. off. Like, you guys, I love you. This one is uh, Tuna Creations Jalapeno. And it is actually, mm -hmm. I got to admit, this is actually spicy. It's not the, uh, it's not runny. That's what I like about this kind of tuna. It's not like really runny tuna. Hmm. Not bad. It actually has a little bit of kick. Put this on the on the MRE cracker, and that cracker would be actually good. Let's see. Um, where did I see? English candy beats all candy, hands down. Um, fun fact, the color of the bag <clears throat> for the gum is representative for the flavor. Oh, Canadian stuff is the best. Nicholas Green Outdoors says, also, please try the pizza, Emery. 
I have not had the official MRE pizza. Wait, but there's a pizza had, MRE? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have had the uh, that MRE that I showed on my live stream the other day when I was at, uh, what was I at? Sportsman's Warehouse. Uh, those things are phenomenal. I actually absolutely love them. It's just I had to buy like two or three of those to get full off of them. And they're a bit pricey. I think they're around the 8 to $9 mark, and that's U.S. I'll tell you something, though, man. That store is a place I would love to visit. Oh, that's that's our baby store. That's Wait until I take you to the, uh, the mega store because I could spend a week straight out there and not see everything. I am fat. My idea of an MRE is a box of Little Debbie's. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss that? <laughs> Never trust a skinny survivalist. <laughs> it says there's also a Philly cheesesteak one. Really? Ooh, that'd be good. Hey, guys. I'm going to get back to work. <coughs> Say hello. DMS Outdoors, no problem, buddy. So your gum should be cinnamon flavor. Yeah, I think it is. Well, what, what about to find out? Does everybody know what the gum is for? I do not. Um, <laughs> the gum was originally put in the MRE as a uh, to loosen your stool after you get done eating because when you eat too many MREs out in the field, you become constipated. Good to know. I, uh, yeah, I remember hearing that this now. Is, um, this is definitely um, cinnamon. I'm kind of hating myself right now. <laughs> How long do you think you could? How long do you think you could? That's a good question. <laughs> How long do you think you could? Uh, survive out in the woods? Or, or what? Sugar boost and morale boost. Yep. Here we go. Oh, how long do you think you guys think you could survive winter camping in the woods without any food? I'll tell you straight up right now, me, 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that question, that, that question there, me and Tyler were talking about that for a while. It depends on your location. Uh, because up here, because of it being so cold, everything turns to hibernation, even the squirrels, so all that you got left are chickadees. So if I was out in the woods and I had no food with me, I would be... Uh, hard, hard hunting. Oh. Very back. Like the uh, gorilla's back, monkey. Um, so yeah, What's we were talking about that. Uh, depending on you know where you live, knowing your environment, going out there with no food, no water, which I happen to be doing uh, here next month or maybe uh, January or February. I'll be doing a collaboration video with a good buddy of mine, and we're going to be doing a seven-day, uh, seven-night winter uh, survival challenge where we're going to be uh, taking uh, really light gear, no food, no water, and we have to do what you know is within bushcrafting, and that's it, that is thriving out in the woods in our environment. Where I'll be going, I, I know the location. I know what is out there. I know what I can eat. Uh, so if everything, let's say everything goes right, how long can I stay out there? Uh, given the food and stuff, I would give it, I give it about it. days. Uh, I have done longer. I've done a 15 day, uh, winter survival challenge, but I did have food. So I think seven days, I mean, think about it. Anyone can go out to the woods, no matter your experience level or not and survive 24 hours, 48 hours, even up to uh, maybe 72 hours is pushing it. But if you're out there in the woods and you're not doing a whole lot, anyone can be out there for two days without food or water. You're not going to die. It's going to be miserable. It's going to suck. But you can't survive, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours out in the woods. Uh, at that four-day to five-day point, that's when things start to get scary because that's when your body starts shutting down. It needs the... Uh, energy it needs uh, the calories to keep going and if you haven't consumed any uh, yeah you're in for a, a bad day and and water is important way way earlier than food is 
you'd actually be yeah. surprised that in the winter time and cold and in the cold environment, the water is the most important thing because your body become dehydrated a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to find that water and you got to find it fast. And you're, you're not just, you're not taking a mouthful of snow. Actually, it's funny because a lot of people say that, you know, you don't want to just take snow and, uh, and pop it in your mouth. But, um, and then now late great Morris Kohansky didn't agree with that at all. I said, are you kidding? I took snow and put it in my mouth all the time. So, you know, I, I spent all this time saying that, you know, just grabbing snow and popping it back is not a good way to deal with dehydration. <clears throat> but I kind of feel that if Morris Kohansky says something, you can take it to the bank. The problem with that theory with me would be the fact that you're taking something cold and you're putting it into your, your body, so you're dropping your core temperature as you're doing that. Yes, that's very true. So that would put me, and that's just coming because I do, I, we do extreme camping in here in northern Wisconsin where it's it's brutal, mm -hmm. and that's the last thing that I want to do is start dropping my core temperature down. Yeah. Let's see, the other thing, too, is like uh, if you were to – to uh, fall into a lake or get wet out there in, in dangerous cold weather, uh, they, you know, they tell you to put snow and use snow to absorb, you know, yeah, the water yeah. from your body. So don't rub snow around you. Yep. So uh, in a, a dehydration state, when you, you start eating that, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like one of those old, you know, uh, sure, it's you know well, it's something it's you hear about. I don't know the exact. It follows that same lifestyle too. That when you you start hypothermia, you're gonna you're gonna die falling asleep. That's untrue. Right. I will guarantee you, you wake up before you die. Let's see. If you want a third person to go on this seven day challenge, help me in. I did the last few years and filmed it. Prompt to start my YouTube channel. Nice, nice. Uh, it depends on your location and where you're about. Um, you guys got to remember too is uh, Mother Nature. She's she's out to get everybody. She's not she's not there to give anything up easy. So it, it's a it's a chore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. There's a lot of things, you know, that, you know, when we do cold weather survival, um, I've got my, my A game going. I got my A gear out. Um, I am coming out with a video showing you what happens when you go and get stuff from some equipment that isn't set up for cold weather. If it's, it's a three season setup and I push it to the fourth season in negative degree weather, the outcome is not good. And it, 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 we'll see it there, how bad that hypothermia kicks in when you, you can't physically put your boots back on. You're shaking so bad. Your body's trying to warm itself back up. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, like, hmm. the thing is, the point I always make is that bushcraft is about sitting in the forest and enjoying yourself. <laughs> survival is when everything goes to hell survival is not fun no. yeah. so I do whatever i can to not end up in a survival situation we did this purposely it was a, it was a test for testing out gear i knew what i was getting myself into when i did it uh and i knew what was going to happen i was hoping it would it would turn out better than what it was with the gear but i knew it wasn't going to be as uh peachy keen as what i normally i'm normally used to right which is a really good thing because at the same time, everybody that's in this chat has a channel about bushcrafting, homesteading. If somebody's starting out new and they don't know any better and they go and they watch you do something, you've done that so many times, you make things look easy. So they, a little kid, well, oh, I can go do that. Look at how easy that is. And he puts himself in harm's way. Yeah. One thing that none of us want on our shoulders is some somebody watching our stuff and saying, oh, look what he just did. So it's really good to show some of those those hardships because every, everybody knows that we, we go out there, we do our thing, and we're showing the things that we do. But how many people actually show the things that have gone wrong? I do. I think it's important to show the things that go yeah. wrong. It's very important because everybody learns from it. If it's a, if it's a pro 
or somebody that's just starting out. Yeah. And, and because I, <clears throat> I often say that, you know, someone, you know, putting up a tent and like editing it. So it's a, it's a two second thing or whatever is having a YouTube channel and saying, by the way, I'm not an expert at this stuff. It's not enough to say you're not an expert at this stuff because yeah. nobody really, really hears that. They Absolutely. watch you make it look easier than it is. Chelsea, absolutely, you got to show the failures honestly. And then, Phil, how cold do you take a wool blanket from the U.S. Army issue? I use my my military my sleep system, and I put my wool blanket. I put that on the bottom in my sleep system. It it creates that extra heat barrier in there. And then, if I'm using like a mylar blanket or something like that for extreme, like if I'm looking at like last weekend when it was 14 below then I would put mylar inside that also so that the heat is reflecting. So <clears throat> a couple of my mess ups, and like I said, I, I've said it time and time again, I am no expert at anything, at bushcrafting, at survival. I mean, I like I said, I, I made it pretty far. I made it to the top 20 of the show alone. And <clears throat> out of the 8,000 people, like I said, I made it to top 20. I went to the survival training camp up in New York where they picked their final 10 to head out. And I was a backup for the, I think it was like the two months after the uh, survival camp in case someone got injured, I was going to be a runner up for the show. Uh, so I have my fair knowledge on stuff. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I made lots of mistakes myself. I, uh, the first time I went out and did a winter camping uh in a negative 53 degree weather uh i thought i had everything my sleeping bag i had two sleeping bags that i was up into i was in my big carhartt zip up suit uh everything was going right until the uh the snow was melting on top of my tarp and uh my tarp collapsed with a bunch of water at around three in the morning in negative 53 degree weather and i knew at that point right there that i had to pretty much strip down to my bathing suit and make a run for my truck because I knew there was no way that I was going to, uh, you know, beat hypothermia. So I've had stuff like that. I've had stupid stuff. Like I went out on a camping uh, trip that I wanted to record and I forgot one of the most important things was a tripod for my camera. You know, I mean, it can happen. <clears throat> I've done that. There's been times I forgot my camera too, you know, I, I went out there and, you know, but <clears throat> I actually enjoyed that time when I, when I left my camera there, because there's not too many times as a, a, a YouTuber or a content creator that does, you know, outdoor camping videos. Uh, there's not too many times now that I just go out there just to camp and not get anything on footage and just truly enjoy myself. So I am very thankful for that time. And here's, a, here's, a, here's another trick for you guys all too on your tags and your sleeping bags. So it says right on there, extreme is negative five Celsius to negative thirty-two Celsius, and comfort zone is from negative seven Celsius to negative fifteen. So what's that in Fahrenheit? I don't know Fahrenheit from Shinola. Well, let me look it up. I want to say that's around negative thirty-six Celsius. Well, what, do you, what, what is freezing? That's 32? 32. Because I know that, that Celsius and Fahrenheit meet at minus 40. Canoe Hand will probably tell me I'm wrong or something, but I think. <clears throat> uh, oh, thanks, Travis. Well, one thing that you want to look at is, you know, when you buy a sleeping bag, make sure you're reading it if it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, especially for your area. Yep, that's a good point. Because a four degree bag in Celsius versus a four degree bag in Fahrenheit, not the same thing. Nope. Very true. But I mean, because I live in Celsius, right? And like most of the stuff that we can buy is American made. So I just, if I see a four degree bag, I, I just, that's going to be Fahrenheit. You know, I, it's virtually never not Fahrenheit. So I'm getting used to seeing certain numbers and being like, that's probably in degrees freedom, not in degrees Canadian. 
So one degree Celsius is 33.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So this 15, okay, here's the problem. This 15 degree bag, negative 15, is 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So that is, and if you're looking at the extreme level of things, so negative 32 Fahrenheit, and that says right on the tag here, extreme. Yep. Is zero. Mm -hmm. Well, I got too many check marks here. No, I was wrong. Hang on a second here. All right. So that is negative. Uh, that's extreme. So that's negative 25.6 degrees Fahrenheit or below zero for Fahrenheit at 32, negative 32 Celsius. Uh, okay. Not recommended to that cold temp. No, extreme is not, you're not going to be comfortable in it. But it'll probably keep you from dying. Correct. So one of these, one of the biggest things is read these little tags. Yeah. You know, it does make a difference because the video that we shot the other uh, this last weekend, that is a sleeping bag that I was in at negative fourteen, and it put me in pre stages of hypothermia. Which yeah, yeah, I don't know if you want to go into it, but the the whole uh, boots thing. If you want to discuss that now, or if you want to wait till later, it's up to you. But what? When it comes to showing signs of early uh, hypothermia. So your what will happen is your the early signs is when you when you start to shake or shiver. That is early signs of hypothermia. Um, when you get it to a, a extreme is when you have the uncontrolled convulsions where your body is actually just trying to move every muscle to get warm. Um, the next step is, is like I was getting is my, I was getting extreme headaches. I couldn't actually physically know the difference between my left and right boot and trying to put your boots on your hands are so froze. You, you can't get them up. Uh, these are the signs of extreme and you're really getting close. You're, you've got minutes to get to somewhere warm that's when it becomes difficult because your body, it took everything I had to walk from where I was back up to the house. How far were you? Mm, I want to say maybe a hundred yards. Wow. And mm -hmm. all I did when I did this challenge is all I went out there was with my normal car, uh, car hard jacket. And I had a t-shirt underneath there because I knew when I crawled into the bag, I wanted the least amount of clothes on me as possible so that would actually radiate around. And it's a it's a good size, decent bag. Other problem is, is I'm 6'5", wider than most people. Most mummy bags won't fit me. So when I zipped up the mummy bag, it only came up to about my chest. Oh, shit. All the most important things are sticking out. So I used my Carhartt jacket to wrap around my upper half, knowing that this was going to be bad. And then I flipped over the uh, um, Mylar blanket, which you know, it I could start to see ice forming on the inside of the tent. The Actually, the filter or the, the screen mesh on the outside, it does have vents on both sides. That got frozen. I could see crystallization in the tent when I had turned everything on. Camera, of course, the lenses are all frosted up. So all my breath, that's another thing, a bad, bad, bad thing to do. If you get cold, is do this because that's going to make it a lot worse. Mm -hmm. uh, 511 tack boots, I swear by them. That's another thing, too, and he also said waterproof and all. There has been, like I said, I, I do construction, so I have had every single boot imaginable from lacrosse boots to uh, red tails, you know, you name it. And there's only one pair of boots that I found to be 100% true by the name waterproof. And those are my mucks, my mucks Arctic sport boots. If you guys are looking for like a cold weather uh, boot and that's 100% waterproof, I would I would highly recommend those muck boots. And if you're looking for extreme cold weather boots, uh, I, they're called um, Ravens. They're made in Canada up in the Northern Territory. They're specifically set up for the cold environment and they're rated for i want to say between 50 and 90 below they're they're your feet are nice and totally warm but the liners are made from aerospace or uh, the space shuttle i want to say the uh, arctic sport uh boots as well the muck boots 
think those are already down to negative 50. They have like a thousand degree insulation in them. And uh, they, they are awesome. I'm actually looking forward to getting another pair. Uh, like I said, doing construction, uh, like tying rebar and stuff like that. Rebar wire, you know, will poke a hole in them. So that's the only reason why I'm replacing them. Other than that, those things are amazing. Is that M-U-K or is that M-U-C-K? M-U-C-K. Um, which I don't know if I, I can grab one and see if I can. Actually, here's a, here's, or these are baffling.com. I'm sorry, but here's wow. the liners for them. I found the mucks. Whoops. Let me see. Mark, go ahead. Mine, that was wrong. They're baffling's. No. Oh. I was thinking, thinking of my pants. Them are ravens. So those are, these are the, uh, mm. uh, these are the chore editions. So they're a little bit smaller. And these only have like around 800 degree insulation in them. Uh, okay. I, I, I do construction, so these boots have some holes in them. Uh, they are fairly beat up, but even with all the holes and everything, I mean, my feet still sweat in them. So, yeah, that's the other the other thing we can talk about is when you're in a cold environment, sweating is not a good thing. True. Yep. Very true. <clears throat> Which is why you don't want to bundle the hell up before you get into your sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always found uh, what's best is dressing in layers, and you got to dress in layers depending on how your your trip is going to go. So if you're starting off, uh, you know, hiking in for like five, ten miles in, you know, you want to dress in appropriate layers. Yep. Absolutely. I'm looking at uh, muck boots now, which is why I'm not looking at the camera. I'm checking them out. We, the one of the stores that's actually sponsoring one of my upcoming videos, Jack's Outdoors. Uh, great family-owned outdoor company, and they're actually hooking me up with a new pair of uh, muck boots. They're the Arctic Sport 2.0s. Nice. So they're not even out in stores yet. So I'm like, I'm like goshing over them. Let's see. Where the hell are muck boots based? <clears throat> are they in like Maine or something? Oregon, I want to say. I want to say Oregon. Maybe. But you know, those are those are compared to a lot of, of the uh, lacrosse boots. And if you know what lacrosse boots are, you know that they're super expensive. I think I've seen a pair today. Uh, one of the cheapest pairs I've seen was around $360. Mm. Uh, compared to these muck boots, you, you buy the, the top line of muck boots you can get for roughly around 160 bucks uh us yeah yeah that's a big difference there yeah you know like i understand this sort of you know you get what you pay for and everything but not everyone can throw 360 bucks at a pair of boots right I mean, that goes with a lot of things, too. I mean, yeah. like, I, I really want to get into the whole uh, winter cold camping. Uh, and, yes, I do like using, uh, you know, a tarp shelter setup. It gives it that more bushcraft vibe. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm not going to go out there and just be miserable and freeze, you know. Uh, which, I mean, it, doing it the right way, uh, I know Mark can uh, testify that if you if you have a good shelter, Built, uh, you can sleep right open and uh, you know be comfortable all night. Uh, but you know, depending on where I go, that, that's sometimes not an option. So I've been really looking into like hot tents, and uh, I uh, I'm actually I actually have a video that's around 77% done exporting that will be premiering on YouTube tomorrow night around seven o'clock if anyone has time. But uh, there is this new hot tent uh, by one tig one tigers one tigers, one tigers yeah. uh, for a hundred bucks. Hot tent? Yes, a hot tent for a hundred bucks. It is the Smoky Hut uh, for a hundred dollars. It does not come with a stove, but it has a stove. Uh, it's got the hole. Yeah. Yep. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking I might pull the trigger on that and. And see how it goes. 
I'm looking for it now. <clears throat> I'm looking, I'm not looking it, but I will. My limit on boots is $150, and that's on leather boots. Yeah. Yeah, that's reasonable, I find. <clears throat> I, I just can't go throw like 300 bucks at a pair of boots. Right, right. You know, just not, you know, not with everything else I got to pay for. And see, and that's the thing, too. I mean, you spend, and that's what a lot of people, I think, don't understand that it can get very expensive. Very, you know, trying to do the kind of stuff that we do, uh, given the, yeah. the kind of environment that we're, that we're in, especially with cold weather. That means, you know, we can't take our, our cheap, you know, Walmart or Canadian Tire tent out in the woods. That's for uh, sure. The weekend. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I agree completely. When you, you know, when it's 40 below, you know, you, you got to have good gear on you. Because you, you can't just sort of make up for... Like, if, if you're not in a... Here's the thing. I like being out in the cold, <clears throat> but what I love about being out in the cold is being inside with a wood stove going and being, oh, boom, well, cuddled up in my blankets. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, yeah, I, w I was looking at... Um, I was looking at the Esker makes a tent for like 1,200 Canadian. It's like 10 by 10 or three meters by three meters. <clears throat> but it's just, oh, so one time. Is, it it for, oh, that's a nice shelter you got there. Is it's that the, your cold weather shelter? The big one is, and then the, the actually the lean to is a super shelter. And then oh, yeah, I saw the, uh, the mile hour or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one on the other side actually has a, a uh, military style, um stove in there so that you with a cooktop on there there's actually plastic that can come down on the front of that big window that you can okay. close it off and it it'll get about 90 degrees in there hmm. nice so that's us this is pretty cool. you don't see a lot of shelters made that way nope this is my this is my setup and i've had the big shelter can hold four people on cots so you're not on the ground and then for those people that actually want to uh, test the fire, we do put the long fire in front of that other one, and uh, they sleep on that. That's, you know, like I tell everybody, it's made out of wood. That The foundation of that one is on wood, but it keeps you off the ground. It keeps you warm. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is my bushcraft camp, and I've had people out there that I've, I've taken out, and they had a blast. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jason, that's... Oh, and that that laptop's about to die. That it's like at seventy-seven percent of battery. Uh, no, Jason, I that that brings me up too. I was gonna, I've been tossing the idea. I've seen a lot of people when I put on my community tab, what kind of challenges would you like to see me do next? And uh, the goodwill was one of the biggest ones I've seen come up a lot. Was do a goodwill challenge or a thrift store challenge. Uh, going into a goodwill or a thrift store and, and finding stuff that you could use to do a, a two day uh, survival challenge. So, you know, I live next to a goodwill. We don't call it that around here, but I live right next to one of those stores, and I don't find anything in there, man. <clears throat> I keep going in thinking I'm going this time. I'm going to find a wool blanket. I'm going to find a wool blanket, and I walk in and there ain't nothing there. Our smell smells, smells like death. <laughs> There's about 20 to 40 items that I picked up. One of them, including, was the uh, the sleeping bag, uh, the Ascend sleeping bag, which is rated to like 20 degrees. Hmm. Uh, I picked one of those up there for five bucks, along with uh, a hiking backpack, my uh, my waterproof bag. I picked up there, which was roughly around. Okay. Uh, it's around an eighty dollar bag. Still had tags on it. Pick that up for five bucks. So, yeah, I need to be get... to live in a town with better uh, thrift stores. Well, you oh, Sandy, you good to see you. 
What's that? I said, hello, Sandy K. Good to see you. <clears throat> see ya. Um, you know, I figured living in Canada, you guys would have a lot of that stuff gone through the, uh, the Goodwills, huh? But not really. Well, I think it's, it's also what city you're in. Like if I was in Calgary or Edmonton, I'd probably find some good stuff. Or if I was up in whatever. But I mean, I'm in Montreal, right? Yep. Um, you know, it's been urban here for for a long time. I mean, the city is 400 years old, and it's all very sort of very chic and very fashion and very digital and very. So not not a lot of not a lot of like wool blankets, not a lot of the kind of stuff that we're interested in. Mm-hmm. Like you know, in some towns, you walk into an antique shop or a thrift store and you find an axe like a plum or something. You're never going to find that in a, in a thrift store or an antique store in Montreal. You know? Oh, wow. Never. No, you'll, you'll find some, like, whatever, crystal decanter from 1956. You know? Stuff like that. But anyway, it's frustrating because, I mean, I, like, I have a lot of friends south of the border or living in more rural areas. And they're like, yeah, man, I just picked up this, I don't know, whatever, this beautiful axe for two bucks at the local five and dime. And I'm like, shut up. I don't know if you remember the week or two ago when you were going live and we saw about tents. Mm-hmm. I told you that micro uh, light LL Bean tent that I had in, in my wilderness shelter system video I had. Yep. A $500 tent. I guess yep. I got two bucks. I remember that. You told me brand that. New, brand new. The box wasn't open. Five dollars. Yeah. That was an extreme score right there. Yes. Yes. That was a. So you got Justin's asking on the bottom. How did the three of you guys meet and have you ever done a joint adventure? How the hell did. Um, Tyler, you and I met over at Canoe Hound Adventures? Nope. No? What happened was uh, one. Lonely night of needing my bushcraft needs. I decided to go on YouTube and type in bushcraft and hit the live search to see who was talking about bushcraft live. And I saw you pop pop up and I joined your stream and you was talking about my logo, how you enjoyed my logo. Hmm. And we started talking about knives and axes and that's kind of where we hit it off. And then later down the road, uh, we saw each other, I think, in Dennis's life. Yep. And uh, I, said, oh, I didn't know you know him, and I think he said the same thing. But I didn't know you know Dennis either. I'm like, yeah, well, it's a small world, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yes, Mark, I mean, it's a very small world. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's the thing, too. You can be on YouTube at any given time and, and type in bushcraft and hit the live search. You don't find nothing. Yeah. You know, any anything else, you know, obviously gaming and, you know, makeup tutorials, you'll see any of that live at any given time. Yeah. But not Bush Park. Mark, how did it is you? shocking how many? I met you. You were at some party, and you were had you were downstairs talking. And I think at that time you were you were uh, doing something because McCarthy Survival was the one that brought me to your channel. Okay. And then. Uh, we started hanging out, and then all of a sudden, I see you and the same people that I knew from way back when, the Stein North. Uh, you know, and I'm like, okay, this is this is kind of neat. And then we just started talking, and now here we are. And I am actually, uh, Justin, I am trying to finagle him to come up here in the Northwoods to do an extreme camp. Um, maybe after the new year, I can hornswoggle him for a couple days, and uh, we're going to go out on a out to my camp and uh, do some uh, extreme camping. And I haven't seen them snore, but I, I think on this one, I'd be pretty safe. <laughs> you know, the, the only thing that we got to look at too, what a lot of people don't talk about when they're doing extreme winter camping for us, we don't have to worry about, about bears. I mean, in the summertime, that would be one thing that we'd be looking for, but we have wolves, we have coyotes and we have cats. And uh, that's the things that we got to be careful with. Cats? Oh, like bobcats or mountain lions or something? Mountain lions, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
But you know what? It's it's just a bad habit of mine. What's that eating? Uh, no, he said I search for makeup live streams quite often. I put yeah, I'll tell you cut. something. Oh, you've cut down on uh, trolling for live streams to watch. Yeah. I think he's talking about makeup live streams. <laughs> yeah. Are they talking about like, regular makeup, makeup? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's shocking how many channels there are out there telling you how to get a great smoky eye. And I'm like, why are there so many makeup channels? Like, how many different variants of the exact same information can you possibly? Uh... Oh, see you, Dennis. Have a good night. Like, how many versions of the exact same thing can you possibly watch? You know, <clears throat> it shocks me that there are enough viewers to keep all those makeup channels going. I am completely consuming this IMP, by the way. I was saving it to do a video on, and I started munching on something, and now I'm down to, like, the sliced apples. Well, I'll tell you what, Jess. I will send you an American MRE. All right. I'll take it. I have a few to spare. Sandy's saying you're leaving or good night, God bless too. Uh, exactly, yeah. Justin. That's what I thought. They knew too they they do know too much about makeup. It's starting to scare me myself. You got that right. I'll tell you something about Rain Dance Bushcraft. He worked ten years at Canada's largest fashion magazine. Oh wow, I did not know that. I hated every bloody minute of it, but the pay was very good. <laughs> and the women were spectacular. Yeah. Good story, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I fell into it. And um, yeah, the magazine's closed now. Uh, Rogers is a huge company here, and they decided to get out of magazines. And so they sold off a few, and they just closed others. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, 10 years in an office with hot pink walls. Oh, I'm sorry. That's sorry why you're back out of the woods, huh? Well, well, you know, it's funny because I used to, um, you know, like I bought my my grand's for his Brooks axe, what, five years ago, and I had it sent to the office. And um, and I opened it, and I was like, what? Look at this. You know, I'm dancing around my office. And it turns out one of the girls who worked in um, on the French side in marketing, not marketing, uh, special projects or something. <clears throat> she had a brother who was, um, not a brother, a boyfriend who was really, really outdoorsy and she liked to camp and everything. And so she saw the axe and she walked over and started asking about it and asked how much it was and ended up buying one for her boyfriend for Christmas that year. Oh, nice. Cool. So I like to think that I did some good work there. Yeah. That one time. So Tyler, you see that big uh, tender, uh, tender line sitting on the fire there behind me? Oh, yeah. I do. <laughs> that's how we rough it nice and you know where I learned that from where one of your buddies Joe Robinette yep <laughs> really yeah. oh he carries a steak out there with him I'm like that yeah. is a good idea because I'm a big time meat eater and I'm like boom so anytime I go out in the woods and I said you know what the best time to do that is in the winter time because it stays frozen I'm going to worry about it Scramble though eats a lot of steak in the woods too. Says Glenn and Scramble is actually back. He's actually making yeah, videos on that. Yeah. And I'm uh, glad he's back because he's my daughter's favorite YouTube bushcrafter. Thanks for subscribing to us, Justin, and keep it like uh um Tyler was saying we're gonna be doing this every Monday. So I'm glad that you came by and you found us. Well, speaking of of, of uh the whole Monday. So I already reached out to a few of my buddies. You know, I kind of have that black book of magical people. We're going to be having people like Joe Robinette being in here for an interview. Uh, Chris Thorne, uh, Zachary Fowler. We're going to have Craig Ovens. We're going to have quite a bit. We have a very special guest that was actually uh, had one of my spots on the loan show that's going to be doing that too. So I, I've already made some pretty big calls and got some some uh, good to goes for this series that I'm gonna be starting on my channel every Monday night, the Bushcraft Talk. So, so this podcast yeah, is every week. Yep, I'm gonna do this every week. I, I I've been having so many people. 
as long as his techs hold together, we got to get him going with his tech. But yeah, I need to upgrade a little bit. It'll get better and better each week, but I will get there. So, um, because my uh, my panel discussion series is starting tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, but I'm not doing it every week. I'm going to do it once a month or once every three weeks. Just because uh, it's a lot more work than just doing my usual Tuesday night live streams. Mm-hmm. See, we were talking about it too. Is when uh, um, even though home setting is my I, I love home setting and because I live on a homestead, that's my my main thing. But bushcrafting and being outside is my whole family's passion. We love it. That's why we have the camp that we can go to and stuff like that. And I like to tell and teach other people how to not just survive but thrive. And that comes from a really old friend of mine. He says it all the time. And it's a very good point is if you can take somebody that has no clue at all, have a blast out there, you're going to make a bushcraft out of them. And this is actually a dying breed. There isn't so many people that are doing it anymore. Yep. Back in the day, it was called Woodsman. Uh, what's the name of it in Canada? They call them uh, which uh, bush people. No, that's down in, that's in uh, our, uh, Australia's bush people. But it's all bushcraft. It's all the same thing. And like the Les Voyageurs or the... I don't know what you just said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Voyageurs were the guys who um, who had these huge 40-foot canoes Oops. between the natives oh. and, and uh, the Europeans. Um, they were <laughs> Tyler's just like popping people off the Put the mouse down. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm trying to teach him how to how to do the, the the tech side of things at the same time, but it's a crash course because he's like, "Hey, we're going." We just talked about this last week. He goes, "Hey, by the way, we're going live Monday." And I'm like, uh, "We got nothing ready to go here." Uh, I mean, we haven't done bad. It, it's about an hour fifty minutes in. Still have seventeen people in. I think we had a spike around thirty three or somewhere around there. So nice. It's cool. Oh no, it's been it's been nice. So very nice. Yeah, and guess what? Knock on wood, I'm not going to say it, but we didn't have any. Yep. We have been pretty blessed because it, yeah. it, it's been pretty rough lately. Uh, for uh, hmm. Good night, Sandy. God bless you, too. And that is a, and the other time, Tyler, you're going to have to tell your story about this morning and then what I text you and then what happened because that was pretty cool, too. You don't have to do it on this one, but that's the – Oh, Harry. Oh. There's some helping for better gear. Tyler can use that. I, I'm not seeing nothing. I, I'm still back at like 10:42. Chelsea, thanks for oh, that. Case, Chelsea, I'm thanking you on Tyler's behalf. He is. Uh, he spoils me. <laughs> <laughs> He's been my highest super chat. He's done it. I think in the last three. Good night, Sandy. He's an all, all around good guy. I do appreciate that. That's definitely going to go towards like a back. Uh, some kind of back thing that Mark's got that I could do that kind of crazy stuff with. So, and also camera, like I said, I, that's something I wanted to bring up too, uh, which I'll try to bring this up here and show you guys. So that video I've been editing, it was done at 5:30, and it's still exporting because my Nikon can't handle the cold weather. I get five minutes out there in the woods and then my camera shuts down. So I had to use my GoPro, which shoots 4k and uh, this video that I, I'm going to be uploading is 109 gigs. See, so uh, we and we, here's, here's the crazy part is I spent 53 hours editing this video uh, up till last night, and then all of a sudden my computer updated, and I lost all that progress, and I had to restart editing at like 9:30, 10 o'clock at night until five o'clock this morning. I stayed up all night editing this video. So it has been. Needless to say, he had a he had a bad day starting yesterday afternoon, and it just rolled all the way through. Yeah, I woke up this morning. My battery was dead on my car. I had a flat tire. Yeah, it was just it was just a a, a rough. And, and you had a flat tire. Same and a flat tire. Yes. <laughs> somebody <laughs> hates you, man. That's what I. I hate somebody in my neighborhood's like, I hate that guy, and I'm gonna make him suffer. I, you know what? Yeah, I wouldn't put it past some of the people. <laughs> yeah. No, it was just, I don't know. I haven't drove it in a couple of days, and I know it had a slow leak. And mm. Yeah, it's just crazy. 
So oh, that's all. I'm glad to see you here. Um, and thank you for sticking around with us until we shut down. That is awesome. Awesome. Yeah, definitely, Phil. I, I, I think I got a notification this, uh, sometime this afternoon. I, I seen that you had subscribed. So uh, I do know you're new here. I do appreciate it. How do you get the I, notifications? I other channels. What's up? How the hell do you get the notifications when people subscribe? Turn, you can turn your notifications on. Like I get it on my. Uh, I have all the notifications set on for my YouTube channel for when it, someone comments, someone likes a post, someone says something. Yeah. You know, I get if somebody comments, but that's about all I get. <clears throat> okay. I'll get likes. And like I said, my phone goes off maybe a, a billion times a day because I'll get you know, Instagram, YouTube, you know, even Facebook. I just made a, a Facebook account. So if you go to Google, you can turn that all on. If you're using Google or, Am or not Amazon, um, uh, Google and you're using Gmail. You can turn your notifications on, so when it sends you that email, if somebody just subscribed, or it'll turn it on. Okay. I'm taking a look right now. I'll, I'll find this later. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna spend all this time sort of staring off at another screen while you. I, I, I think I messaged you somewhat today, Jess, and said, "Hey, by the way, I'm gonna start a a, a bushcraft podcast." At right around the two o'clock mark, and then, yeah, I was gonna wait yeah. till next week and get everything set up on it. But I was like, you know what, I, I don't really need you know anything fancy at the moment. You know, later down the road, that way when someone you know new jumps on my channel and starts watching these you know bushcraft podcasts, they can kind of see you know the evolution you know evolving and and what it becomes because I have, I have some you know uh, high hopes for this. So. We'll see. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I have plans to change all this crap. I'm, I'm gonna build something to go right behind me, and hide all that until we can. Uh, That's the get main this free right there. He is yeah. my, my uh, electronic anything related guru. So, cool. Like actually, uh, I think I have to use my my backup laptop here because. <laughs> For some reason, my camera didn't want to work on my my main laptop. So, yeah. What are you using as a camera right now? Like, what's that? What are you using as a camera right now? Uh, to the streaming with? Yeah. Uh, it is a Logitech 1080p uh, camera microphone setup. Uh, it's it's exactly the one I've got. Then, right? It's got these two little white um, lights on the side to to show you that it's working, right? Yeah, I can actually, I think I did this last time. I can do a selfie mode. Oh, where is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's not bad. No. Whoops. Oh, for land sakes. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We all got the same one. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's, it's an okay a, camera. It's not. It's not a it's great. Camera. Mark, Mark over here can actually use his DSLR for his live streaming as well. Yeah, I've been trying to use my DSLR. I got it to work at one point. Um, oh yeah, and then I bought this. This is like um, a power thing, right? That's the same shape as my camera battery. So you go pop and you plug it in. So that you know everything doesn't die about thirty minutes into your live stream, but it doesn't freaking work. No, that's really good. So this brand right here, don't no. get it on thirty-five bucks down the tubes. But yeah, because I would really love to get my my DSLR into action as my as my uh, live streaming camera as well as my general stuff camera. All right, I'll give you guys a hint. I gave you a trick what you need. You go find this, and my computer is going to yell at me. You're going to hear bells go off. <laughs> this is a USB 3 HD capture, capture card. This is what you need in order to get your DSLRs or any kind of high-quality camera to work. Okay. And what brand is that? Like if I look it up on Amazon, what am I looking for? 
You're just just type in a USB 3.0 HD capture card. Okay. All right. And, uh, these things will allow you to use. If I can hook it up here, I'll I'll bring it in and show you what the difference is. Hey Tyler, I think we also should start up Tech Talk something. Yeah, that too. Uh, Let me just refill my cup real quick. You got to remember too, like your HDMI cables and everything else. You know, you want to make sure that you get really good HDMI cables, not the junky ones. Okay, these things are affordable. Here's one for like 107 Canadian. Yeah, they're not bad at all. So, and you're going to have to excuse my mess because now Tyler's going to want me to do this and it's going to turn my green screen on, but that's all fine and dandy. Uh, you have to play with your functions on your computer because one or on your camera because you have to get rid of all your. Uh, Mold that show up on the side, but I'm actually using my camera, so I'm not going to do that. So now, if I bring in my other camera, where's my my mouse here? Where are you? There you are. Yeah, so I'm go down to scene four. Bring my camera back up. Uh, Chaucer, if you quit giving me super chats, you might be able to get a a new uh, webcam there, buddy. <laughs> Don't tell him that, for God's sakes. Send him on my channel instead. <clears throat> I do appreciate it. I really do. It does. Like I said, all the money. Uh, if I don't donate it, which I, I, I donate quite a bit to the Wounded Warrior Project. I'm very passionate about that. Uh, so I do donate a lot of money to that charity. Uh, and the rest of the money goes towards, you know, the stupid stuff that people don't think about, like the gas that it takes. Like for me... As I said many times, it's a, about a two-hour drive to the woods to go shoot a video. You got two hours there, two hours back. You know, we're we're talking serious gas and maintenance updates, and yep. uh, you know, not only that, but gear too. I mean, you know, what, especially like this winter winter season, I know because of where I can do my videos, I need to have something uh, to like a, a hot a hot tent because I can't go out and cut down a bunch of trees and make these these huge super shelters that I want to do yeah. uh, due to the land that, I, that I'm on. So how's it going, Ryan? Hang on a second. I'll be right back. I think I just froze my stuff up. Okay. Nice uh, to see you. Tyler, it, I'm glad to hear that you're into uh, – that you support Wounded Warriors because uh, – one of my sisters, she's in the Air Force, and she's uh, a big player in the Wounded Warriors of Canada. And uh, they do a lot of really good work, especially with you know people who are wounded right up there. Right, it, absolutely. It's a very good uh, organization. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Uh, and the, the thing is with a lot of those charities too, is you don't see too many uh, charities that actually donate all proceeds to uh, the cause. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Winter Warrior Project, every single penny, I mean, every penny goes right to them. So yeah. <clears throat> I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would like to point out something that Chaucer just said. Don't forget the cost of SD cards for the camera. Man, you are so right. SD cards and batteries for the cameras? Huh. They ain't yeah. cheap. And you, it's, it's, on an extended stay, like I'm doing a seven-day, and here's the thing. So I, like I said, this money really does help. Uh, the seven day video that I'll be doing is going to be out in the cold. So batteries are not going to last long. And my camera actually does not work in the, in the weather. So this, this, this weekend, I'm actually fixing to invest into a new camera that can handle the colder weather better than what my Nikon can do. So getting a new camera, you know, usually they come with about one to two batteries, which we all know that is about equal out to about eight hours of footage. Yeah. Typically for most cameras. So <clears throat> every time I see the video, I have even on a let's say a, a, a two day trip, I will use about twelve batteries. 
12. And like since the battery for my Nikon cost around $110 per battery. Yeah. And same for the Canon. 100, yeah, 128 uh, gig SD card, which will last me for the those two days. Mm -hmm. You know, those are around 50, 60 bucks. So it, it definitely, you know, it, it costs money doing this. Yeah. So what camera would you recommend for recording YouTube videos for around hundred dollars? So the cam, one of the cameras I'm work, I'm actually looking into buying is, uh, it's a camcorder. Uh, I kind of want to get away from the whole DSLR, uh, cameras and focus more on, you know, the video quality, which you're going to get a lot better in a camcorder, uh, which I think one of them was a Panasonic, uh, full HD. I think it's the model CX eight seventy or something like that. Panasonic, that? What's that? You said a Panasonic. Yeah, Panasonic Full HD. Uh, I think it's like a HC eight eight or eight oh eight or something, something like this. I have to look it up. Uh, but I'm actually looking at something like that. Uh, for one, the zooming. You don't have to buy lenses. That's another thing with cameras. Like my DSLR. Uh, the 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 next step up in lenses cost me around $300 for my camera. And at the point of how, my age of my camera now, even though last year I spent $1,700 on it, if I were to upgrade my lens, we're talking another $300 just for that lens. So, yeah, you know, and at the point you got to figure out, is it worth it for me right now? No, it's not because I can't record. Uh, so, yeah. Is that camcorder you're talking about just like one of those little guys with the flip out screen? Or are you talking yep. about the, yep. the yeah. Which actually you'll be surprised how many other fairly decent larger YouTubers actually use those. Uh, I got a good tip on on a few of them that I know that you actually use them and they kind of yeah. led me to the camera. And it's a, it's it's pretty reasonable. It's a, it's around $180 to $240, depending on uh, you know, the route you go with it. Yeah. But uh be leery about if you go to Amazon and you type in, like uh, Phil was saying, YouTube cameras, you're going to see a lot of these cheap knockoff Chinese 4K cameras that shoot no better than like 360p. I, I actually bought one that said it was full uh, 4K. It is not worth it. Uh, I would stick to big name brands, and I, I don't like saying that. Uh, but when it comes to cameras, yeah. Sony, Panasonic, uh, Nikon, Canon, you know, those are going to be your, your better options. Even, even the lower grade models that still cost, you know, two, $300. Yeah. You're a lot happier with those and, and be able to buy extra stuff like batteries and, uh, SD cards that the camera is going to support because even that cheap $60 or 4k camera camcorder that I bought, it doesn't support any, uh, SD cards unless it's some SD card from overseas. So be very leery uh, when you're looking at those. Good to know. Um, if when you do buy your your camcorder, I would love to uh, to know what you got because uh, right now for because I'm gonna start showing Camille how how to shoot. You know, because for those of you who don't know my channel, I have a daughter who's like the co-host on about I'd say a quarter of my episodes. I got this to sort of start teaching her how to how to shoot. It's a Canon Rebel, blah blah blah. Is it a Rebel something? No. Yes, Rebel Team Pride. You know, it's around a six hundred dollar camera, but it, it was a gift. And because uh, when I was out in Alberta in the mountains, um, I started shooting a wicked video, and my camera died on me. Like a three hundred dollar repair job from Canon died on me. <clears throat> and my mother-in-law had this thing, which she doesn't use anymore because she's using smaller cameras now. So she she gave me this one. I was like, "What? Okay, thanks." Um, then I got my camera back, so now I've got these two DSLRs, <clears throat> and this is going to be fabulous for showing Camille how to start videoing as well. So that maybe I'm not the only camera person doing the videos when she's out there with me. Yeah. That's actually uh, right there, Jason. I think that is the one I'm looking at buying, the Panasonic HC V180. Oh yeah, that one's way affordable, and it's got really nice stats. I think it's around 177 dollars with like 50 times optical zoom. So yeah, yeah. Let me see if I remember what. Uh, 
What was he saying, Mark? I found one on here that's a Panasonic's HCX 1000 4K HD 60p 50p professional camcorder 20 times zoom, and it's only two thousand dollars. Yeah, that one's it's a different format and everything. Yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. Like I said, this video that I'm uploading now, I started downloading this video after it's all done in editing. I started downloading it at 5.30 this morning, and here it is, 11 o'clock at night, and I am at 79% because it's all in 4K. It is a huge file, 109 gigs. Yeah, for, if I do a 4K video and I have a 15-minute video, it usually takes me – if I do it in 1080, it'll take me about three and a half minutes, and I take it to 4K, it's two hours. Yeah. Yep. I'm dying to start shooting in 4K, but it's not – I don't want to put 4K videos up on YouTube. What I want is the, the ability to zoom way in on something I'm doing a review of without it pixelating. You well, got to watch too, Jeff. Like Mark was saying, uh, when you upload 4K to YouTube, it doesn't upload true 4K. No. You're never going to get – that true 4K out of it. And not only that, and like I said, I, I've talked to way bigger YouTubers out there that, that you know, shoot 4K and stuff. Yeah. And they're telling me the same thing. It's not worth it. For one, it doesn't upload 4K. And for two, uh, the, the market's not there yet for 4K. Like very few mobile phones, which is I think roughly 89% of what my users watch my videos on. Okay. And I want to say that's around 70% of all YouTube videos are being watched on are mobile devices. Okay. Don't support 4K. Right. It'll go up to 1080p, but it won't be 4K. Now, I watch a lot of my videos on my, my smart 4K TV, my Roku, Roku TV. So I don't think it's worth investment now. I think maybe in two years when, you know, some of the cheaper phones – or starting to run 4K and, and laptops and all that. Yeah. So they just, it, at, the, like I said, I, I'm fixing to buy a new camera. And that was my biggest concern. And I had to call a few of my buddies and say, hey, uh, I need a new camera. I've been thinking about the 4K. You know, times are changing. What do you think? And they say, don't do it. It's not worth it. It takes too much space. Or the 4K videos are way too big. That's the other problem. And that, uh, there's so many things like when I do 4K now and I put it on YouTube, it's so the video is so big, the picture is so big because of the 4K. YouTube can't straighten it in, so it'll it'll get really pixelated and it just doesn't look as as nice. If I take it take it down to the lower end of 4K, and I load up a video that way, it's nicer. But it it uh, the YouTube will still when they because they just shrink everything down. Yeah, they take away everything you're doing. But I mean, if you're doing some real action shots in 4K, by when you pull it up and you do it at 1080, it does look really good. I have uploaded everything 1080, 60 frames. A lot of people yeah. don't watch 4K. No, I uh, I do 24 frames because you know I went to film school. I, I you know Jeff, <laughs> the crazy thing is, is I've been doing 24 frames up until about two weeks ago. I switched to 60 frames. And I actually like that smoother motion than I do more of the cinematic, you know, motion that you would get with the 24 frames. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Some people really prefer that. I, I just, I'm, I'm a little old fashioned in what I like, you know, so I, I, I still really like the motion of, of a 24 FPS um, picture uh, video. Tyler Airgun says, Tyler, can't you convert your files to lower quality? When editing, so here's the thing editing, it, I'm actually, getting it down to a T where it doesn't take me too long to edit. Like I said, the first time around, it took me about 53 hours to edit this video. The second time, last night till this morning, I got it done roughly around eight to nine hours. Uh, it's just the exporting them from the video software program that I'm using, which is Filmora, onto my videos on my computer. And then that way I have a copy and then I upload that to YouTube. Which my upload speed is ridiculous. This 109 gig video, when I go to post it on YouTube, I will barely have the title written out before it's already posted and ready to go live. So that's not so much the issue. Is it's just such a rather large file file once it gets all done. 
Hey Jess, here's one of the videos that we just that we just created. This is actually our uh, intro for our live streams now, and this was done with um, uh, CyberDirect. And I'm getting back into the old school of things too. So this is going to be what I what we've been working on here. shot in the lower end of 4k at the lower end okay yeah so i mean it's definitely doable you can get good results you know um the thing of it is too is like when i watch it on my monitor because i've got a 4k desktop monitor it's a gaming mm -hmm. monitor. It's like, wow, this is awesome. And then you see it on the YouTube side of things. You're like, man, that don't look as good as it did when I made it. You know? Right. All right. Uh, I've got a 4K monitor as well. But honestly, when I'm watching videos, it doesn't matter. It really yeah, doesn't matter. I, I do, <clears throat> since I work a lot, most of the time I'm watching videos off my phone. I don't really enjoy it too much unless... You know, we're having a late night. I got nothing to do the next day. I can pop it on the old TV and mm -hmm. uh, good to go. So, so, yeah. For me, like I said, I, that was the biggest thing I was worried about here recently was with getting a new camera. Should I upgrade to 4K uh, as a main camera? Like I said, I have a GoPro that shoots 4K, and that's my second backup camera, which I've been having to use here lately. So, I just don't see it's worth it at this time. You also like I, Tyler. You might have noticed that over the past couple of months, I've I've started doing a lot more sort of zooming in than zooming out, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to do more of that. That's why that's why I'm going with the the camcorder itself. You know, a lot of these, like the one I I plan on getting, does like 50 times optical zoom and like 30 times something zoom. Yeah, but crazy because my nikon my camera I, I can't get the i have to have my camera right on something zoomed all the way in in order to get that shot that i'm looking for right so i want to say out of all my videos like the, the the most proud i am of any of my videos is that lunch in the woods the asmr edition mm -hmm. because of the many different shots that i have and you know that that video to me really speaks you know that bushcraft vibe and that kind of editing that I want to eventually get to on every video. Right. Hey, Truth, good to see you, man. Hey. Uh, guys, it's uh, quarter past midnight for me, so I'm, I think I should probably go and, you know. <laughs> well, thanks for coming out with us. There you go. We're probably fixing to, to cut the stream off tonight. We don't want to get into everything on our first episode yeah. as much as don't blow your one the first night. Save some stuff and parcel it out over the next few weeks. Yes, uh, sir. I do appreciate you coming on. Thank you again. Yeah, I hope to, to check it out again next Monday. Um, yep. I guess I'll see you guys when I see it. Take All care. Right. Take All it right. easy. Bye-bye. Also, everyone in the chat, too, want to thank you guys for coming and hanging out for the last two hours. You guys that came over from my channel, make sure you guys are checking out Tyler. If you do not have him, pick him up because we are going to be coming over here and be doing this bushcraft podcast. So it's going to be a lot of good, interesting stuff. And we're going to be doing some tech talk on how to get your stuff to do what you want it to do, especially in cold environments. Uh, we both have struggled through that. And so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And same with my subscribers too. I mean, Mark has is, is definitely been helping me out a lot. Obviously, he's very knowledgeable about all things outdoors and tech-wise. So definitely give him a follow and check out some of his older uh, bushcrafting videos. You guys will not be disappointed.
Uh, so again, uh, everyone, thank you. God bless. You guys all have a safe night. And Mark, whatever you got to say. Take care, guys, and thanks for coming back and, and joining us. And uh, you guys are, are a wonderful group of people. We learned a lot from you guys also as what you say in the chat. It gives our, our brains thinking that we overlook something. So that's awesome, too. So thanks for coming by, and uh, we will see you again next Monday at around 830, if everything goes right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be as chaotic as it was tonight, but you know, it's a learning. It'll get better. So. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Yep. Take care, everyone. Thank you. And God bless.